I'm not a very religious squid, but if you've watched my videos, you know I love looking for the human condition in stories. Religions are the most popular stories on the planet, whether you think they're all fictional or you believe in some of them yourself. Stories, like all works of art, are projections of our thoughts, whether those thoughts have an origin in our brains or our gods, or both. So I was tickled when another YouTuber, Gigguk, joked about establishing an anime religion. I mean, at this point, we might as well start a new religion, Isekaiism, where if you die, you don't go to heaven or hell, you just get reincarnated as an Isekai protagonist. In an anime genre called Isekai, or Another World, the protagonist typically dies in the first episode and appears in a new reality. They often fare better in this new reality than they did in the real one, or they return to the real world having learned valuable lessons. Gigguk suggests that in a theoretical isekai religion, whenever anyone dies, they're reincarnated in another story, maybe as slime, or a refrigerator or something. The main drive behind the narrative comes from our slime boy protagonist Rimuru just trying to make the world he's arrived in a better place, and that's what makes him the backbone of this series, even though he doesn't actually have a backbone. It's hard to say which isekai was the first. So Line recently popularized the genre, but Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz are arguably isekai, and they're decades older. If we allow religions and philosophies into the competition, Plato believed that our soul inhabits our body until our body dies, and then our soul enters a new body, until we settle into the stasis of perfect rationalism. Hinduism beat Plato to the punch by centuries with their idea of samsara, a cycle trapping souls in different realms until they finally escape. It's easy to see why isekai has taken off as a genre. It's been around for millennia, and we've always liked it. I'll end this video with my trademark pretentious pseudo-philosophical hogwash, but until then, let me lull you into a false sense of security by talking about anime. In case I haven't been pretentious enough yet, let's bring in Joseph Campbell, too. Campbell suggests many myths can be described with one basic structure called the hero's journey. In the hero's journey, someone crosses a threshold and then returns with boons. The hero's journey doesn't apply to every story, but in a genre like isekai, defined by crossing a threshold and gaining powers on the other side, Campbell seems pretty apt. Yu Yu Hakusho isn't what most people think of when they talk about isekai, but the protagonist Yusuke is hit by a car in the first episode and experiences otherworldly realms. Yusuke returns to life with new powers and new responsibilities. Then Yusuke returns to the afterlife and back to real life again and again, each time fighting new enemies and making new friends who push Yusuke to be the best he can be, even to the point of frustration. Damn it! You're in no shape to be playing the hero. Well, if I don't, who will? I have to go save the world again. The same thing happens to, uh, what's-his-face, protagonist of Sword of Line. He's not hit by a truck, even if we might sometimes wish he were, but he plays virtual reality games to visit new realms. He returns to the real world and then visits a new virtual reality every season. Symbolically, if not literally, this reincarnation is the fate of any protagonist of a long-running story, because stories require motion. Narrative stasis only exists to be disturbed and thereby start the story. This is also the fate of, um, us. We find ourselves in a situation, that situation will change, and we will change with it whether we like it or not. I don't want to sound like I'm diminishing or disparaging religion by comparing it to Gigguk's made-up anime thingy. I'd argue all stories are made up, but that just means stories arise from people, and that means every story is as real as we are. It doesn't matter whether or not we appear in a fantasy world after we die. We've appeared in this world, here and now. 
We have a chance to hear stories, and tell stories, and weave ourselves into stories so the illusion of our existence can continue. Let me step back. Perhaps the broadest definition of religion comes from philosopher and psychologist William James, who describes religion as belief in an unseen order to which we must align ourselves. Under this definition, religion doesn't just include organizations worshipping gods, but arguably also schemas for interpreting reality like the scientific method. Whether we believe in any particular holy book, or we entrust ourselves to any particular empirical process, we've got a religion. In this sense, even the notion that we exist is a religion. Belief in the existence of the self is the most popular religion on the planet. Of course, if you believe in a few selves at once, we'd probably call that a disorder. Or we'd call you an oracle, or a prophet. But not every culture seems to believe in the existence of the self, or at least some cultures don't proselytize themselves the same way we do. Some isolated tribes with little exposure to our modern world don't express a belief in gods or souls, or even anything outside the present moment. Someone might look down on these tribes. Someone might say that this apparent lack of self-awareness means these people are more like robots, or zombies, or animals than humans. But I think the reverse is true. The fact that the belief in a soul or a self might not be intrinsic to the human condition shows that all humans are robots or zombies or animals. We only exist as the stories we hear, the stories we tell, and the stories told about us. Or maybe I'm thinking about it too much? That's all I do here at Thinkster. I'd like to thank Gigguk for making a joke that sort of validates my videos where I pretend anime is deep and speaks to the human condition. I'd like to end with a quote from this book I read about Buddhism. I wouldn't call myself a Buddhist, and there are so many different varieties of Buddhism that I hesitate to say anything concretely, but Rupert Getham seems to know more than I do. And he suggests that the Buddhist idea of reincarnation in different worlds isn't just a model of cosmology, it's a model of psychology. <clears throat> when a human being experiences unpleasant mental states, that being can be said to be experiencing a hell realm. If a human being should have happy states of mind, then that is to experience one of the various heaven realms. The equivalence between psychology and cosmology is old. Whatever ultimate interpretation one puts on traditional Buddhist cosmology, it remains a flexible framework within which to make sense of a rich spectrum of existence. Hopefully, religion is flexible enough to coexist and overlap with some dumb anime about people being hit by trucks and waking up in the afterlife. It's all metaphorical anyway. I'll see you next week. Bye bye Hey, you. You're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Walked right into that Imperial ambush.